Welcome to the Let's Get Entrepreneurial podcast, your go-to resource for navigating the world of entrepreneurship. The entrepreneurial journey is filled with excitement, innovation, and potential, but it also comes with its fair share of stress and pressure. Learning to cope with and manage these stressors is crucial for long-term success, both professionally and personally. In today's episode, we're focusing on dealing with the pressure and stress that entrepreneurs often face. Join us as we explore effective strategies and tools for handling pressure, managing stress, and staying resilient in the face of adversity. Our podcast addresses tools and concepts that are useful for the launch and growth of entrepreneurial ventures. Your two hosts will be Professor Gary Palin and serial entrepreneur Ryan Budden. Hello, Professor Palin. How are you doing today? Oh, fantastically. We've got together to discuss a topic that I think is going to really hit home for a lot of people, and that's dealing with pressure and stress. That's a very common issue that virtually every startup and someone running an existing business is face. It's an epidemic in the world at the moment, it seems like, but it can be seriously exacerbated if you're the one starting a business or involved in a really small team in entrepreneurship. Stress can be a killer. It not only is killing your body, but it would probably kill the business as well. For sure. How do you deal with stress or what issues do you think are critical with stress? Stress management is key. Genuinely, I think a lot of early stage businesses, if you just look at their ability to handle stressful situations, you can accurately predict whether they're going to make it or not. If they're still going to be here year after year doing this, leading to an exit or whatever their desired outcome is just by looking at how they manage stressful situations early on. The first thing I look at with stress is consider the source. I like to identify what are the stressors. If you don't know what's causing the stress, it's really hard to deal with it. It absolutely is. Identifying, then you can do something about it. If it's just life stress, it's really difficult to tackle. But if it's stress based on timing, team, finances, you can actually tackle the issue and alleviate that stress. If you don't know what the stresses are, you're battling a ghost. I like it put that way. Do you have any tactics in your day-to-day life that you use to tackle stress? The first that I look at is, and it's actually two parts. One is time management and prioritization. Time is the enemy very often in a startup and actually in life. You have to manage that time. And I use, and I think you do the same thing as use a calendar to keep track of what is happening and scheduling both business and personal, and then also prioritizing what's critical specifically with the business, understand that what has to get done and what are the timelines to that, and then managing that. But I will throw one caveat into that. And I think you and I both agree is if there's something that you can get off the table that takes a very short period of time, say under 10 minutes, Don't put it on your list. Do it right away to get it off the list. Yeah, you kind of stole the words out of my mouth there. I do two things, and I'll hit on the five-minute rule the second. The first is I do daily goals, weekly goals, monthly goals every day. I have a whiteboard where I move things from monthly to weekly to daily, and daily I need to get done today. So that's automatically prioritizing things. And then monthly goals, because I'm reviewing it every day, I'm consistently trying to break them into smaller achievable goals that we can move to weekly and then move to daily. And the second, as you just said, is the five minute rule. I've heard it called lots of things, but if it can be done in less than five minutes, as soon as you think of it, do it right now. Don't write it down. Don't push it off. Just get it done. Yeah, just looking at that long list of things to do can be a stressor into itself. So by eliminating a vast majority of them that can be handled very quickly, even if it's responding to an email, that can reduce the stress. Absolutely. Yeah. Emails are a big stressors for a lot of people. I look at emails three times a day, the morning, at lunch, and at night. In between those hours, I don't look at a single email because I find that you can get really bogged down and it actually can take a lot of time away from other tasks that you need to move across the table. Yeah, I agree. So in addition to time management and prioritization, setting up a support network for yourself to deal with stress so that you don't feel isolated, even if it's a matter of venting and just verbalizing the stress and pressures can be helpful. And surrounding yourself with other entrepreneurs is key there. It's the thing that opened my mind up to healthy stress management in my journey 
definitely is being around other people that are properly handling that stress are going through similar things in you and are able to get through it and work through it. And there's a difference between someone that can empathize versus someone that relates directly and someone that is an entrepreneur driving a business can definitely directly relate. That's exactly right. You have to, as an entrepreneur, know when to turn it off. Sometimes entrepreneurship can feel all encompassing. The mindsets that you take away from entrepreneurship are all encompassing. They relate to every part of your life, no matter what it is. However, the business has to have an off period. I've seen burnout so many times, not only in myself, if we're being honest, but also in other people, because there is no off. The business is their life. From wake up to sleep, that's all they're thinking about. And they don't have the ability for their brain to just relax, do something else. Even if it's productive, it's something not related to the core functionality of the business. Yeah, and that burnout can build up. It's not something that goes away. And there's only so many hours a week that you can be productive. It might be 80, it might be 90, it might be 100. But there reaches a point where if you work one more hour, you become actually less productive. You have to know where your balance is and over what longitude period of time can you keep up that pace without taking some time off. How many times have I been awake at 2 a.m. realizing that I'm spinning my wheels? Although I'm putting time into something, I am not getting anything well, anything that I'd really want to take out of it. And I should just go to sleep. And then you dream about it. Yeah, and then you probably dream about it. Yep, that's <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> Another area that I would advise is setting boundaries. And with that, learning how to say no. Uh, that's probably the hardest lesson I've had to learn. We did an entire podcast about that with the monkey on the back theory. And I would suggest if anyone has a problem with setting those boundaries and saying no, they go back and listen to the monkey on the back theory podcast. How to say no is hard. As soon as you are identified as somebody in entrepreneurship, everyone wants to throw their idea at you and wants you to be a part of their team. And learning to say no to those can sometimes be very difficult, especially when it's friends and family who think, They've had this idea for 10 years and they want you to do it. I go with the theory, at least for myself, I can achieve two separate issues at the same time. I can move forward two projects. If I go to the third, I become marginal at all three. If I go to four, I become terrible at all four. Where two, I can hit a high level of achieving. So you have to understand where that balance is for yourself. How many balls can you keep in the air? Absolutely. That's a hard one for me. I'm an ideas guy. I want to keep 20 balls in the air at the same time. And that's just not how you move anything forwards. You don't pay proper respect to any of those ideas if you have that many up in the air. Yeah, definitely. Another area to balance the pressure in stress is delegating and outsourcing so that you're not taking everything unto yourself. And one of the issues I see with entrepreneurs and very often startup entrepreneurs is they like to micromanage because they want to be whole control. Letting go is hard for many people, but it's critical to reduce that pressure. And delegating can be hard when you're in a small team because at first you will probably be able to do whatever you're delegating faster than the person you delegate to with a higher percent of accuracy. Learning that there's a learning curve and that you have to give it up and have to get this person some repetitions before they're going to be producing the same results as you is amazingly hard. Other people will use various types of self-care and well-being techniques to manage the pressure and stress. Like it could be proper nutrition, could be exercise, making sure you have enough sleep. So there's different balances that individuals can look at. Yeah, that and I see a lot of entrepreneurs limit the hours. They're willing to contribute 80 hours a week. And after that, they need another time block that they're producing something out of a hobby, hanging out with close friends, family, they actually have to build that time into their weekly schedule. Yeah, I can just envision someone who's never started a business listening to us talk. We're talking about 80, 90, 100 hours. I think some people just passed out. <laughs> yeah, you don't even realize that's the low end, especially if you're in a relationship. Obviously, you're married and I have a very long-term girlfriend. Having that understanding with them of what the true time commitment is is a difficult conversation sometimes. Yes, yeah, and someone who's never done it doesn't understand how many hours it will take. Yep, how many hours is truly necessary if you're trying to fast track anything. 
Another area that would be helpful is we tend to be looking at the long-term goal and we have our eye on the ball, but while you're moving along, celebrate small wins. And that helps you to relieve that pressure and stress that you understand you are making progress versus thinking, I'll never get there. Right. The journey is made out of lots of small hills, not one giant mountain. I always like to keep that in mind because there are wins that happen quite often if you're really paying attention to what those wins are. It's easy to cover those wins up in the losses that occur day to day, week to week. For sure. Are there any other areas that you can think of before we wrap up on pressure and stress for a startup? We covered the network. The network has been one of the biggest things for me, surrounding yourself by people with a similar mentality. So I would just say prioritize that if you're dealing with stress, help yourself and surround yourself with people that are really going to be there for you. And I would advise don't ignore the stress. It'll build up and you'll have a problem recovering from it if you don't. Yep. That's another good one. Sounds good. You have a great day, Ryan. You too. Thanks for listening to our podcast. As always, you can head over to profspirit.com to check out more resources and courses designed for you, the entrepreneur. Please follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, and others to get the most up-to-date information as it is released.